river of life, river of death. The Maasai Mara is the northern extension of the Serengeti ecosystem in Tanzania. This peaceful looking landscape had a fiery geologic history. Over millions of years, as the volcanic ash broke down, dense, rich soil was created, which was hard for tree roots to penetrate, but it was perfect for grass. The fertility of these great ash deposits helped to create the grass plains that can support millions of animals. The largest concentration of grazing animals in the world makes their home in this area. The wildebeests, by their sheer numbers, dominate. The Maasai Mara provides vital dry season pasturage for the hungry herds in the northern part of their range. When traveling long distances, the wildebeests move in single file through the tall red oat grass, their shaggy heads down, their nostrils following the heady scent of greener pastures. Motion is their life ceaseless roamers chasing the rains. These hardy grasses can survive the withering effects of occasional droughts, yet they can sprout within hours to nourish the migrating herds. Miraculously, the wildebeests that sweep across Kenya and Tanzania never overgraze their pasture, since they are in ceaseless motion. The secret to wildebeest survival seems to be blending in with the herd. Predators often take down animals that stray too far away from the main group. A wildebeest life is devoted to the constant search for nourishment. Their movement appears like organized chaos because they can't afford to stay too long in any part of their range. The wildebeest must graze for 16 hours a day just to receive enough nourishment to survive. A typical intake of grass then takes 70 hours to pass through the digestive tract and even then much of the nourishment is not absorbed through their system. The annual wildebeest migration is one of East Africa's greatest spectacles. In annual clockwise cycles they move north from the Serengeti Plains in Tanzania to new pastures in Kenya's Maasai Mara then south again to the Serengeti. Today more than one million of these antelopes together with 200,000 zebra make this dangerous 1800 mile pilgrimage. The migration pauses only for a few weeks in the fall, long enough for the females to give birth to a new generation of wildebeests. The Mara River is born in the shallow swamp among the forests of the Mao Escarpment before it flows on its twisting journey south into the Mara Reserve, then finally empties into Lake Victoria to the east. The looping river banks are carved with dusty, worn pathways from centuries of animal migrations. This steep incline at the river's edge looks like a dangerous crossing place. In fact, the steep angle prevents the buildup of wildebeests on the bank. All the animals made it across safely. Crocodiles are drawn to these crossing places and their presence lends an urgency to the nervous herds who watch from the river's edge. With the momentum they gain from the steep incline, the wildebeests make spectacular leaps into the river. Downstream, a few zebras start to tentatively cross the river. This seems like an ideal embarkation point where the long hill slopes gently down. This gentle gradient actually proves more dangerous because it allows for overcrowding at the water's edge. At first, the crossing goes well. The animals make their leap and then follow in single file. Gradually, the river pushes them downstream on the slippery rocks. The Mara River crossing is the most dangerous undertaking in their annual odyssey. Certain crossing places have become imprinted in the collective consciousness of the herds. Sometimes they cross at suicidal places where many are drowned or get trampled to death. Older animals return to places where they crossed successfully before, even if the conditions on the river have changed dramatically. Once the crossing urge is established, nothing deters the wildebeests.
As the crossing progresses, the footing becomes more and more treacherous. A few hippopotamuses keep an eye on the herd as it crashes by them. These massive water-loving beasts pose no threat to the crossing herd. In fact, the hippos eventually move downstream to avoid the commotion. The wind carries the stench of death. I can't help but wondering what these wildebeests are thinking. Are they so focused on their instinct to follow the herd that they are unaware of their fallen comrades? Or does the sight of so many deaths goad them forward in their frenzied effort to reach the far banks? My curiosity as a wildlife photographer pushes these questions to the front as I try to get in the minds of my subjects. These animals have been called the clowns of the plains for their strange body shape and their unpredictable antics. While most would agree that the wildebeest is not the brightest intellect in the animal kingdom, it's obvious that nature has favored these antelopes, for they have multiplied and flourished. The herd has moved downstream at a place that only gives them narrow access, creating even greater danger. When there is a temporary lull in the crossing, the wildebeests move further downstream, looking for other places to enter the river. The wildebeests are eager to escape this river of death. Zebras find security amid the tightly packed wildebeest migrants. A small group of zebras appears isolated as the wildebeests move past them. Every zebra has a distinctive pattern of stripes, much like human fingerprints. Baby zebras must memorize their mother's stripes during the first few days of life. That instant recognition is vital to the baby's survival, since only the mother will nurse her colt, and zebra families tend to get scattered in the confusion of mass migration. When the zebras make their way across, they make sure they stay well upstream of the frenzied wildebeests. While they are driven by the same need to reach greener pastures on the other side of the river, the zebras project a more orderly style as they cross. A baby zebra temporarily separated from his mother, struggles bravely across the river. Despite the deep water, he makes it across. As the wildebeests surge on like a primal force of nature, I reflect that the herd itself seems like a creature in its own right, regulating each animal's destiny. The Great Migrations are an inspiring mystery of endurance and navigation. It is also an elemental story of survival ensured by movement, for motion is life for these wildebeests. Without vast open spaces, these great herds cannot survive. In East Africa, it is a challenge for conservation groups and governments to protect wildlife. Financial resources are scarce, and wildlife faces increasing pressure from rapid human population growth. Once the river crossing has expended itself, the scavengers and predators have a feast that will last them for over two months. A 
in the struggle for survival, nothing goes to waste. The feeding crocodiles bite into the rotting flesh, then spin their massive bodies to tear off huge chunks of meat. A large meal will satisfy the crocodile's appetite for at least six months. Dead wildebeests piled up in the river awaiting the vultures are a grim sight. There are so many bodies that crocodiles do not need to hunt to survive after a large river crossing. 